Hello and welcome to Africa Revisited, part one of two. What is this podcast, I hear you ask? Well, my name is Vinnie White and I travel around making podcasts about travels because I like it. At the end of 2011, I lost my job as a radio DJ in Ottawa, Canada. <gasps> yes, it was all over. But they gave me some severance pay uh, and that severance pay was enough to make me think, oh. Then I looked out the window and realised it was winter. Yeah, now winter in Ottawa is brutal. Sometimes it's minus 20 degrees centigrade or minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit. And I looked at the severance pay and I looked at the weather in Ottawa and I booked a trip to Africa. And if you want to do the same, having listened to this, then you should, because the company still exists that uh, I booked it with, and they're really good. Have a quick look at oasisoverland.co.uk. I'm not being paid to say this. I just think they're quite good. Um, oasisoverland.co.uk. This trip would take two months. Now, it would be on a big truck with 13 other people that I'd never met, some small groups, some individuals like me, and this is a podcast of those travels. I've mashed all the Africa podcasts together and I've cleaned the audio and now it sounds better and it's more concise and it's just two parts. This is part one, quite a good chunk of East and Southern Africa. In this part, it's the beginning in Kenya, Tanzania, and Malawi. That's what you're going to hear today. And in part two of the Africa podcast, you'll hear Zimbabwe, Zambia, Botswana, Namibia, and South Africa. Okay, so that's a lot to take in. Let's do a quick recap. It's January 2012. I'm about to spend two months on a large truck in Africa with people I don't know. During the day, quite often would hang out on the truck, moving through Africa, and during the night would be camping in wherever the hell we were without further ado let's get into it i really like these podcasts and i'm um, i'm pretty proud of them i'm really proud of just taking this trip when life was getting me down and maybe you could learn from that too if your life has recently gone through some changes and you think i should probably take a trip but it takes some balls i only just had the balls to book this and uh, I believe in you I believe you have the balls book a trip if you want one you only live once all right let's begin part one of a two-part podcast all the way back in 2012 this is Africa hello and welcome to the Vinnie White podcast in association with Tosca beer one of the best beers you'll find in the world oh, daddy. What shall we do? Sing the dee. What shall we do? I would say that because I'm drinking one. It's the local beer here in Kenya. It's the first thing I'm doing. I've just checked into my first ever room on my Africa trip. And the first thing I'm doing is a podcast. Let's hope this dedication keeps up. I must have a work ethic because now I don't have a job. I figured I might as well get one. Right, now, where am I? What am I doing? What's going on? My name's Vinny. I'm about to partake in a expedition on a truck across Africa and I've just arrived here in Kenya, in Nairobi, um, the capital of Kenya and also the biggest city, about four million people here and um, I've just been picked up at the airport by a tour company. That tour company are going to be, uh, well, I'm going to be with them for the quite some time uh, well the next couple of months in fact as I uh, cruise uh, on a truck through various different African countries I think I can remember them but I'm not entirely sure we certainly start here in Kenya and then in a few days time I'll move on to Tanzania um, first impressions really interesting actually um, it, of course this used to be until 1962 a, a British colony and um, as a result of that it actually looks a bit like Britain it's got British road signs and although I have to say it's pitch black uh, there's not much lighting because the power's a bit dodgy and um, there's potholes in the road everywhere and all the cars have no lights on and all the usual things that you find when you get out of Western civilization. But I like it, it's got a nice buzz about it, good vibe. I got picked up by a guy called Smiley who definitely earned his name and he uh, took me uh, on a ride all the way back here to this peculiar mm, hostel type thing uh, with peeling paint off the walls. Most people would hate it but I quite like that kind of thing. And... Um, that's where I am now, and uh, so far, so good, I think. Now, it's at that difficult stage, because downstairs, 
is the rest of my group, I think. There's a pool table and some weird looking people who might well turn out to be my best friends or enemies over the next couple of months. And I haven't actually gone down to meet them yet. So soon I will depart, put this beard down, put this microphone down and go and meet them. And I think I'll do that on my own because it's a bit weird saying, hello, I'm going to spend two months in a truck with you. Would you mind speaking to this microphone and telling me all about yourself? Bit intense. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's what I'm going to do. I can tell you a little bit of about the uh, Kenyan culture from my brief uh, uh, questioning period with Smiley. Um, for a start, English is widely spoken. Um, then, of course, there's Swahili, uh, which is the other official language of Kenya. And then, of course, there's um, various other dialects throughout Kenya. He, for example, spoke Kukuriu, I think he said, um, and he taught me some, of which I've forgotten. I did remember some Swahili, though, Jambo, which apparently is uh, said about 250,000 times per second in Kenya. It's uh, essentially, hello, how are you, and all the other frivolity and greeting that you'd expect from some very happy smiley people so it's all jumbo 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 but unlike in canada and england at least it doesn't matter how many times you say it i did hear a triple jumbo earlier apparently that's acceptable i might try and get away with a quadruple jumbo see if i can push those boundaries yeah that's how i roll um also i, I heard the word sour which means okay and you can double that up as well sour sour means everything's okay sour sour so generally speaking if you want to get by in kenya jumbo sour you'll be good to go the beer is tusker it tastes good what else can i tell you i mean i could read out parts of a wikipedia page but you can do that yourself uh, emotionally speaking i feel a little bit drained i did um i spent last night in heathrow airport which is possibly one of the most depressing places in the world at four in the morning there's no flights and there's just you and a couple of other people that are extremely tired being kept up kept up by a man who must have in his former life been a member of the gestapo he was working in a cafe in heathrow airport and every time anyone went to sleep in his cafe he'd come and bang some trays together and remind everyone not to sleep even though there was no flights no one going in or out so it really didn't matter Something terrible is going to happen to him. Surely, if fatalism is true, he's uh, he's not got much longer on this earth. Anyway, so that was my night last night, and then I had a brief cup of coffee in Zurich, Switzerland, and then uh, flew down here to Nairobi. So all very jet setty, all very groovy. I'm very excited about this whole affair. I feel really good actually, despite the fact I haven't really slept in a couple of days. I don't entirely know what's going to go on over the next couple of months. I'll be going to Victoria Falls, I can tell you that. There's a magnificent waterfalls on the Zambia-Zimbabwe border. I'm going to be doing some sandboarding, I hope, in Namibia. And I'm going to be swimming with dolphins in Zanzibar. I've actually purposely not really looked at the itinerary of this trip. Oh, it's so exciting. Well, it's a few days later since I first talked to you in Kenya and I've already crossed the first border and here we are in Tanzania. And I am sitting around with my newly found friends. Aw, oh, hey? Nah, my friend. <laughs> You're in my tent. You have to be my friend. Or at least pretend to be for just two months. Yeah, so I'm sitting on a grass plane. There's some eagles flying overhead because something's dead nearby and or maybe vultures. Um, there's a snake park down the road that we've just had a look at. And um, so we've just got off, well, yesterday, we got off the truck and made our first tent camping situation. Staying in a small tent, two people. And here is my official two-month-long roommate. Hello. Prost. What's your name? Where'd you come from? And am I or am I not the best camping friend in the world? I'm Dominic uh, from Germany the place where you get the best beer, I guess. It's not actually Tusker that's the best beer. I wanted to correct that. And yeah, you're snoring a bit, but it's fine. It's okay. You can't have it all. To my left, we have Marish friends. What's your name? Where'd you come from? My name is Fionan. I'm from uh, County Mead, just outside, about an hour outside Dublin. What do you think of this trip so far? 
Yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's pretty hot. I had to make a thousand pancakes for breakfast and I saw two camels, so all in all it's been pretty good. The local Maori people are really slow, as is everyone in any equator country. At first I thought they might just be lazy and then I realised that I actually can't really do anything at any speed whatsoever and just getting up takes a lot of effort. And you, my friends, you've acclimatised into the pace. You look very relaxed. You didn't look relaxed last night at the bar when we were knocking back shots all night. I had a few beers. <laughs> what are we doing tomorrow? Hitting the Serengeti? We're going to see Simba and Mufasa and all his buddies. <laughs> Is there a bar there in the, in the park? Yeah, for sure. We'll have to take it easy on the booze, though, because... I hear there's some disgustingly early mornings. Did you down? No. Did it just? Did you just get pooed on by an eagle? It looked like poo coming down from the eagles or whatever they are flying and stuff. Live excitement on the podcast. <laughs> so today we went to a Maasai village called Maasai, for the Maasai people, and our tour guide spoke excellent English, and he told us that he has one wife and he's saving up for another wife. He's currently got one wife. She costs 10 cows, and he's saving up for another wife, which is another 10 cows. Jodie's on the tour with us. What do you think of that? 10 cows for a woman, good deal? <laughs> I think it's a um, pretty good deal, yeah. I mean, would you say that you were worth 10 cows? No, at least 30, jeez. Quality woman. All the men were out at the market and or hunting, and all the women were... Building houses. And... They were building houses, yeah, because the women build the houses. What, did, what was your overall experience of the village? What did you think of it? Well, I think in today's society, people would class that as um, sexism. Yeah. Well, in, in an English society, anyway. But that's their way of living, that's what they're used to, and that's what worked for them, so that's pretty good. Children, yes. Giving us a lot of attention and wanting lots of pictures and holding our water bottles for us. It got to a point where it was actually quite difficult to shake them, literally shake them off, wasn't it? I think I might have one in my bag. <laughs> Is it wrong? I'm going to wait till she gets older and sell her for 10 cows. <laughs> um, 10 cows in the bag. People, the Maasai people, do you think they're hospitable and friendly or...? I think they're friendly, but I also think they're on the sort of begging side. They they need to get money from somewhere, I guess. But also, if, if we're constantly having to experience that, then it might get a bit... Repetitive. One of the things that you seemed a little bit shocked about was the recently made illegal female circumcision. Well, Vinnie, I would say the process of that <laughs> is to get a nice blade Nice sharp, they don't even heat it up, they don't use antiseptic or anaesthetic or anything like that and just cut away at the old um, female genital region area and um, I think it's around 15 isn't it? For the yeah, 15. Is Girls are allowed to cry and blink their eyes but boys aren't. If you lived here, would you have one or would you try to argue against it and prove that you're a man without it? That is a good question. I can't transpose my thoughts as I was a Maasai. If I was Maasai, then I'd be culturally different. If I lived here as me, it's a big fat no. I think it's grotesquely barbaric. In Maasai culture, we saw today that it's quite popular to have lots and lots of children. One of the reasons they've got so many children is because they are polygamists. And as we said earlier, one wife is about 10 cows and um, he's going for another wife. If you were a wife, and say so this gentleman that's got one, if you were her, you've been married to this fella, nice chat, tour guide, bit of a looker for a few years, and then he said that he's going to get another one because he's just got his 10th cow. How would you feel? Do you think there's jealousy involved? In my culture and that, in what I've been brought up with, yeah, I'd probably be a bit jealous because I'd see it as I've fallen in love with a guy and he's concentrated me in. It's like, what am I doing wrong? Some men have eight, nine wives. Do you think there's a lot of rivalry between them? No, I don't think so. Um, they all build their own houses, so they all have their own space to live in. So, they, yeah, they don't really know any better. So. so the men can go from house to house as evenings go by and pick and choose the wife they want? Yeah, that's, that's it for them. <laughs> yeah, it is, as a culture, so different to ours. In fact, we made quite an impression on them just by being in the village. I don't think they saw a lot of European people. 
Was it you that they were obsessed with your freckles? <laughs> no, that was Laura. Um, being white, they are quite amazed by us. And yeah, like you said, they don't really see white people as often as we do. Um, so yeah, they're amazed by Laura's freckles, so they're counting them up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, th I think they like different people coming to visit them. It's, it's different for them, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite educational as well. And although I have to say that they're terrible photographers. Did, <laughs> did you get your camera stolen and they yeah. took a picture of you? Yeah, and one one child took a picture of their eye, which was actually quite good, <laughs> I'll say. But no, no, they like it. It's technology that they don't normally get to play with. Where are we going next? We're off, I believe, tomorrow to get in the big yellow fun truck and go to the Serengeti National Park, which is something that I've been excited about for some time. We're splitting up and being put into four by fours, yeah. two groups in four by fours. Have you got any, any must sees on the agenda? Yeah, um, I definitely want to see um, zebras and lions. I, I, I just want to see everything. Yeah, they're the main ones really. I want to see giraffes, yeah, and I think they're probably the easiest to see yeah. as well. If I don't see a giraffe, not a happy chappy. Hopefully uh, we'll be able to see some like wildebeest, that'll be cool. Mm. And maybe immigrating, because that's meant to be the time of the year. So. Not immigrating, migrating. Migrating? Unless, <laughs> <laughs> unless they've got passports <laughs> and they're trying to get Canadian residency. <laughs> you never know. You never know. <laughs> well, we'll report again from the plains of the Serengeti. Actually, we might not. We might not get a chance until Zanzibar because after the Serengeti, we're off to Zanzibar, which is an island off uh, Tanzania. And, uh, well, we'll let you know how it goes. It's all terribly exciting. And by the way, have you noticed that the group's bonding a little bit? Everyone's starting to talk yeah, to each other. it's all very lovely. I don't think there's any... Well, I haven't met any murderers or weirdos on there, have you? No, but we did play that game last night. What was that? Um, the Mafia? Oh yeah, there was the world's worst card game <laughs> <laughs> where you're supposed to reenact like Cluedo and everyone's given it. I, well, I'm not even going to bore you telling you about it. I, I was very close to throwing myself in a local river full of crocodiles because it was so dull. Yeah, it was a quick game, but it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> but there's some good peeps and we're having some good time. So we'll report soon with more from the adventures of Africa. Dun, dun, dun. Will you hold my hand? Good morning. We are somewhere in northern Tanzania in the Serengeti National Park. We being a truck full of people from around the world. Hello, crew. Hello. That is the German. He is the comedic value of the group and has been nothing but a special wonder to us all so far. So we're in a truck, we're going across the open savanna landscape. There's trees to our le left and right and a giraffe in the distance, um, one of many. We've so far seen, let's go through what we saw yesterday. Giraffe, elephant, elephant right. cheetah, is amazing. Leopard in a tree, although I'm still convinced it was made of cardboard. We saw, oh, well, they saw an amazing chase with, from lions chasing some wildebeest. We saw water buffalo, a migration of wildebeest. Yeah, there was something, there's about two million in Tanzania, and we must have seen a good 25% of them. <laughs> it was amazing, just a mass of specks in the distance. And we, has anyone been bitten by mosquitoes? Yeah, quite a lot of sunburn. Um, also some, oh, I don't want to go into graphic detail, but there has been some questionable toilets in some of the campsites. <laughs> And uh, some people have got some incredibly weird hygiene habits on cleaning up after themselves. You can use your imagination. Anyway, I'm with a truck driver. He's a Maasai man wearing local colour. Hello, what's your name? Today. And what is it tomorrow? Hey! <laughs> it's a common gag. Um, his name is Today, and he's fantastic. He's been really good to us so far. Thank you. Welcome. Are we quite a good group, would you say? Sure. Yeah, really enjoyed being with you guys. Excellent, loaded question there. All right, so um, today, could you explain to us where we're going now and what we might see? Yeah, um, for now we are going, uh, we're still doing our day, game drive for almost uh, two hours. Then we go to the visitor center where you go to have uh, more information about the Serengeti. And then we start going, driving back to the gate straight to Arusha. 
Arusha, where our big yellow truck is, isn't it? Yeah, because at the moment we're not actually in our usual home of the big yellow truck. We're in two different 4x4 vehicles. And the, the beauty of them is you can split the roof open and stick your head out and get really good pictures. Well, I think we've got really good pictures. Quite happy with ourselves. We'll find out later, really. The German, so far, has been nothing but comedic value. He's lost his phone, broken his camera, and last night he slept on his sunglasses. Um, would you like to say a few words to the people of the world? Of the world. Just visit me at home. Are you having a good time here? Yeah. My uh, sleeping partner, the Canadian English, is a bit snorry at the night. It's kind of a water buffalo hippo mixture, but getting over that, so it's okay. So what was that happened? This, what happened this morning when we woke up? You you started making animal noise. I thought, yeah, I, I heard some animals, and I thought I'd just expand the uh, variety. So I think there came some. What was it? Horses, monkeys, yeah. dolphins. You did a great horse. Someone did a monkey in the background, someone in another tent. Then someone did, I did a sheep, you did a goat. And then his dolphin impression was, dolphin! <laughs> anyway, speaking of animals, we're going to see lots more today. Um, how long have you been doing this job? Uh, seven years. Do you enjoy it still? I mean, you, you must have seen everything that we've seen a hundred times over. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. I never get tired because I like I liked animals. And yesterday, would you say that was a better than average day? Because a lot of people said it's very rarely that you see two cheetahs right next to the truck. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. It's, not, it's normally uh, so rare to see the cheetahs in that distance. It was, there was, it was very close. One of the things that we've all been amazed at is that when we're hanging out of the roof with binoculars and cameras with zoom lenses and contact lenses and glasses, and you always see the animal first. What is it that you've got in you that makes you realise that there's a cheetah three miles away? Experience. <laughs> Whoa! We're just going over a big bump. Well, thank you on behalf of all of us in the truck, and we will report in later should there be any weird shenanigans. Thank you, team. <laughs> Hello, group. Hello. We've just eaten some big fat barracuda and various other dishes, so we might be a little bit lackadaisical, lazy. We were on safari last time we spoke, and you just heard from today, our driver. We had an amazing time. It was, well, I would say, breathtaking moments. Cinematic, huge, open savannas, only interrupted occasionally by large umbrella trees, acacia trees, and striding giraffes. Some adrenaline flowing as cheetahs ran after various wildebeest. What was your favourite part of it, Captain Germany? The elephants. Uh, not just because of their big magic stick, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, they're just really amazing animals, you know, walking through, chilled. Not even lying, being able to take them down usually. And just the landscape and the wonderful people, the wonderful driver. It's our first day off since the tour started about 10 days ago, although it feels like it was two months ago. So hello, Americans. You are two Americans in amongst the mixed bag. We heard from the German that was here, but let's hear from more of the group. Um, we're all on a big yellow fun bus. We're all cruising across Africa. Hello, Americans. Where are you from, and what do you think of this trip so far? I'm from Wisconsin. Uh, I think the trip is great. Very exciting. We had a great time in the Serengeti, saw a lot of cool things. I really liked Ngorongoro Crater. It used to be a volcano. Yeah, it was a volcano that collapsed. Two and a half million years ago. Two and a half million years ago, the volcano collapsed, and now there's animals, and they don't really leave the crater. They all stay in the crater, and it's kind of its own little system of cool stuff. So we saw, like, a lion hunt that failed, but it was pretty cool. And we saw an elephant, like, five feet away from our truck. It was pretty neat. Uh, yeah, it was really neat. Do you know, American, I can tell you some facts that I learnt on that trip. One of them is that if you were to get all of the insects in the Serengeti, which is the size of Northern Ireland or Connecticut, if you're in God America, if you were to get all of the insects in the Serengeti, they would outweigh that of the other animals. We learned that at the, at the Serengeti Information Centre, I believe. 
Do you know that Serengeti means endless plain in Maasai? After being there, I believe that. Um, it was pretty endless. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Jody. Can you explain where we are, roughly, and what vessel we are on? We are on a very old boat, which is probably used for fishing normally. Um, there's far too many people on here, not enough life jackets. So, oh, and we're off the Sandy Bar Island, and the sea is really rocky, and I don't like it, and I'm generally scared for all of our lives. Uh, oh, <laughs> ah. I'd usually pick you up on the grammatical error of generally and genuinely that you just made. But I think we've got bigger fish to fry. The sea is so choppy that earlier on I greened out and I had to hang off the boat. And I was pretty convinced I was going to be sick. The guy next to me was sick and it nearly started a wave of sick. <laughs> but for some reason I've, my stomach's tightened up now and I feel all right. Joe, you feel all right in the way of the stomach, but you, you said you're a bit scared, are you? Yeah, my my stomach's pretty sound, but these waves are not. They <laughs> are very rough. I thought that we were going to get in an efficient boat <laughs> with two mighty outboard engines and zoom to a desert island where we'd drop anchor, do some snorkelling and have lunch on the beach. Being Africa, <laughs> never, work, never works out quite like you think it's going to. So we ended up near a desert island that we couldn't go on for some reason. Bit of an argument about that. I'm not sure why we were near it, really, because we, we never went on it. Did some snorkelling. And then the lunch was barbecued barracuda that they made on a wooden boat. Barbecue on a wooden boat. Health Weird and safety. Petrol. Weird petrol. Oh, dear. Equals disaster. Cooked by a man that might well have been drunk. Not really sure if it was all right, but I think we're okay. Mango, pineapple and barracuda for lunch. Bit of a snorkel. Now we're going back in extremely choppy seas. Well, it's not fun. Oh, that was a big one. God. It's beautiful blue turquoise and the sun's shining. And yeah, it looks lovely. It looks really nice. <laughs> it's gorgeous. I'm having a really good time. Amazing time. Oh, it's the first time I've missed that big yellow fun bus that we take everywhere. I want to be back on that again. It's so dry. Oh, I'm actually going to be in tears in a minute. Mom, Joy. Dad, I love you all. Yeah. yeah, this is the last broadcast. This tape will be found off the coast of Zanzibar. I'd like you all to know that we went out smiling and laughing. Mama, mama. Hello there, we're back on dry land now, and this is Vinny. You're getting quite DJ in your old age, I like it. <laughs> well, we are back on dry land, we didn't have any major accidents, um, we, didn't, we weren't flung into the sea, the boat didn't collapse, but we did get stupid, stupid amounts of sunburn, and so did everyone else on the boat. The three-hour drive back to the mainland with an outboard motor that was probably meant for a child's bath toy finally got us home and uh, we were burnt like a couple of sexy rashes of bacon you look like a um, you look like a lobster thanks you look like a crab <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite part about the island of zanzibar well i quite like chilling out um by the beach that was really nice and i um went and swam with turtles which was really fun yeah really fun and um yeah a few people went on the spice tour didn't they which I think was quite good for them, as it is an island known for the spices and slavery. Yeah, it was. It's a, a last bastion of slavery and an island of spice trading being sort of floating about in the Indian Ocean. But there's still loads of spices and markets, and it feels really oldie worldy. Plus, it's got that kind of colonial feel as well, because the Brits had Tanzania for uh, about 40-odd years, so there's kind of British architecture. It's a really interesting place. Yeah, Stone Town was nice. Have you done any shopping yet? Yeah, I got a few um, souvenirs and bits and bobs. Oh, man, I'm still fending people off. I mean, you get approached every two minutes. Hey, you want to buy yeah. a T-shirt, my friend? You want to buy a CD? Panting, panting. Yeah, you want to buy painting? I give you cheat deal. I give you 
as the price, someone said to me. <laughs> and someone said to me, come on, my friend, I'll give you a good deal. Cheaper than shoplifting for you. Did he? Yeah. Good bit of lingo. I nearly, nearly bought it. Then I realized it was a fairly gross belt that he was offering me. Welcome back to dry land. The plan was to get back to mainland Tanzania, get picked up by the Big Yellow Fun Bus and move on to a campsite. Big Yellow Fun Bus was a wall. It's broken down. So we got picked up by a load of tuk-tuks and came here to a campsite. Um, back on the beach. It's not a bad place to be stuck, is it? No, it's quite nice here. Right on the beach. Hammocks hanging from everywhere. Nice white sand. Lovely. I'm Because I'm in a bar and I'm starting to feel better, I'm having a beer. And you're having a bottle of... What is that? <laughs> it's not actually we. It is <laughs> those sachets of dehydration stuff that um, helps put electrolytes back into my body. Oh, it's nice to know it will look the same on the way out as it does on the way in. It's not we. It doesn't taste like we, honestly. <laughs> so we're off to Malawi next. I think we're only here in Tanzania for another day. If the truck gets fixed, it picks us up tomorrow. We've got a big drive. Uh, all 14 of us are back on the bus in perfect harmony. A little bit more bonded than before. Very well known now, aren't we? We all know each other very well. It's all like, 16 of us, not 14. <laughs> uh, okay, so like I said, we all know each other really well, even though I haven't met two of them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Yeah, it should be a laugh, and we get our club on in a few days. Hopefully our burns will disappear, because we will be clubbing on a beach in Malawi in four days' time. I look forward to that. I've never seen you uh, bust any funky moves. Oh, they'll be coming, don't you worry. Thanks for listening to the interview with today. We spoke to Sarah the American about her experiences in the Serengeti. You heard me and Jodie on a boat, Mother Hubbard. And now we're back and feeling a bit parched, but not too bad. It's been fun. We continue now into Malawi. We will report... Ciao for now. Cheery bye. Look after yourself and your mother. (laughs) It's me, Vinny, here, and my new buddy, Fitz. Hello, Fitz. Morning, Vincent. Good morning. And morning it is. We're 70k from the Tanzania-Malawi border. We're heading to Malawi. And we're on the truck, and um, we spend hours after hours after hours. Yesterday, we spent seven hours on the truck cruising through various different African landscapes. I thought one of the things that would be a good thing to do is explain truck life. What goes on? Because we spend a lot of time on this truck and we've all got to know each other quite well. And there's various different ways of passing the time. We have a good laugh on it generally, don't we? Oh, we have a great laugh. It's a beautiful truck. Comfortable seats. You can even sleep on the floor if you want. Yeah, you yesterday pulled your roll mat out and slept in the corridor. People's feet all over the shop. I noticed on day one, no one wanted to touch each other. Now there's like a pair of feet over someone else's, someone's head on someone's knee. It's all gone a little bit like a very clean pornographic movie. I actually believe Dominic's head was in close proximity to Laura's bottom yesterday at one stage. It's true. He looks like he'd, he was being born. It was all terribly wrong. <laughs> yeah, so this big yellow truck, I don't, I'm not very good with trucks. I do know that you have to have a bus driving licence to drive it. And I know that it's really big. Um, I hope that gives you a good description of it. And we're going through an African village. Usual scenario of um, people wheeling massive piles of wood around on bicycles. People in very colourful garb. Kids playing, half-built buildings, dodgy little shops that sell nothing but chewing gum and tomatoes. And uh, thatched roofs on mud huts. It's beautiful. And I'm, the sad truth is, I think I'm getting a bit too used to it, aren't you? Yeah, the sights and the sounds aren't as spectacular as they used to be on... The first couple of days. Now we need uh, an altogether slightly more adrenaline rushing adventure to pique our interest. And we got one this morning. We woke up in a campsite, got on the truck. Well, it was all going quite well. Peter, terrific driver, decided to turn the truck. And where we were parked was right on the edge of a fairly steep embankment. Oh, yes. And as he proceeded to reverse he maybe gave it just a little bit too much and the whole truck felt like it was going to flip over end over end and side by side and kill us all there was some screams of genuine panic and i demanded that everyone got off the truck i got a little bit health and safety conscious i was like you can't keep us here we must get off so we all got off the back into a tree it was a bit like the italian job with the truck it was kind of hanging over a cliff face few very painful revs later he managed to get it out i think we may have burnt the clutch though because he keeps struggling to find the gears 
So what have we seen from the hours and hours? I don't know how long. How long have we spent on this truck? Probably, if we put it all together, it'd be 45 hours or something stupid like that, wouldn't it? Uh, definitely three, three days, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be, actually. Because some days, we're, the long, longest day was the other day. Actually, I'll be honest, I was bored. I mean, there's only so much you can do. And we've learned some pretty good techniques. Uh, we've got some good card games going. It's got a stereo, so we bang out some tunes. Uh, some impromptu dancing yesterday as well. Enjoyed that. I like the fact that you were dancing Charleston style, half in a sleeping bag. <laughs> yeah, well, Commander Bimbele is a terrific DJ and he's got some excellent Austrian music that really just gets everybody in the mood to boogie. Yeah, this is my roommate, the German, who has now become Commander Bimbele. Every local, well, certainly in Tanzania anyway, loves a wave. So if you just give it a big scream and a wave, you usually get, you can get an entire village waving at you as you pass through with the odd jumbo. It must look amazing if you're in a village and you're just sort of sitting around picking bananas or doing what people in villages do, you know, pick tobacco, um, hang, hang out, chat. There's a lot of chat goes on in Africa. A lot of sitting around chatting. I like it. Um, but it must be amazing if you're sitting around having a chat with a banana and then along comes this big yellow truck. And when the front of the truck's open, all of us are kneeling like at the front. So we've got our arms in the air roller coaster styly. About five, six of us lined up above the cab and we're just doing this massive wave. It must be amazing. Oh, here comes a police stop. Police stops, fairly regular. Yesterday we got stopped by a policeman. He asked Pete where he was from. Pete said he was British. He goes, oh, you must know Paul Scholes. And Pete goes, yeah, Paul Scholes. And he goes, OK, my friend, have a lovely day. <laughs> and off we went. It's, <laughs> police stops really are essentially name that footballer. <laughs> and then we've already got two speeding tickets. Uh, when I say speeding tickets, that conjures up an image of actually being given a ticket. Here in Africa, you don't get given a ticket. You just get told to pay a lump of cash which definitely goes to the government. I believe the quote was, you're in Tanzania now, my friend. You must obey our laws. That was really good. You've got better at that. <laughs> yeah, I think it starts at 70,000, and depending how well you want to haggle, it can come down maybe to 30,000. But... And there's four, 16 of us in the back here listening to the negotiations, and it goes something like this. Okay, mate, you, you have been speed. What is going on with my accent? Can you say you've been speeding? I did the African. Okay. You have been speeding, my friend. No, I wasn't. Yes, my friend, you were speeding. We caught you. You come out, have a look. I'm not getting out of the truck. I'll you tell you that now. You have to come out, have a look at the gun. I have the gun here, my friend. You are speeding. Will you bring the gun to me? And the, by, by the way, the reason they won't get out of the truck is as soon as you give them a bit of power, as soon as you get out of the truck, they've got you and they'll charge you even more and more and more. So you have to be strong with them. So the negotiations carried on like this. I'm not getting out of the truck and I'm not paying you any money. You must get out of the truck and see the speeding gun. You have to pay the money. This is Tanzania, man. This is, our, this is our country. You must obey our laws. You can't make me do anything, and you know damn well that there's no way I could have possibly slowed down to the uh, speeding sign that you've just put up to trap people like me. I'm not doing it, and what's more, I'm going to go. At which point he starts revving the engine, starts driving off, and the copper says... <laughs> Oh, I will chase, I will get in my car and I will follow you the whole way. I will follow you the whole way, my friend. <laughs> so we're in the back pissing ourselves at this point, thinking, I hope he hasn't got an actual gun, because this could get a bit messy. It's not even a cop car either, is no, it? No, it's some, like a, that was the thing, I, th I didn't, I was like, where's this cop car? Then I realised there was a beaten up Toyota Corolla with another guy with a Manchester United shirt on, sitting in the passenger seat, just smoking a cigarette. I was like, is that the other cop or is that just your mate? <laughs> <laughs> and he was eating a banana. He was just eating. He was getting done for speeding, firstly. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. And then I realised uh, after his cigarette, he was eating a banana. And he comes over and starts getting involved. This is our country, our laws. Oh, I can't do the accent, I always end up in India. Anyway, two coppers, a lot of negotiations later. Us parks in the middle of the road, blocking all the traffic, giving us a bit more power and authority. Eventually, we bartered it down to, I think it was 20, 30,000, which is about, I don't know, 10 bucks or something like that. Straight in his top pocket, he goes back, pulls over the next truck. It's a good living. If you're going to work in Tanzania and you want to make some money, copper is what you want to do. Yeah, it's where the power is. <laughs> Zidari ko kunsoro 
So people might be wondering, you've got 16 people on one bus. It's cruising for days and days and days through this beautiful continent of uh, Africa. Toilet breaks, how does that work? How does that work? Well, I suppose, Vinny, it's sort of like an ensuite in that we have a little buzzer. You press the buzzer now. It's essentially a doorbell, isn't it? And the doorbell goes through to the front of the cab, yeah. But, um, so Pete will uh, stop when he gets the opportunity and everybody piles off the truck. Generally, girls to the right, boys to the left. I think yesterday we stopped outside someone's house, so some poor African guy <laughs> woke up, had his morning coffee and saw a row of white buns. <laughs> of course, it's very important that if you're going for a number two, you bring your little shovel with you can't hide the fact that if you're going for a number two uh, from anybody else because you have to take the shovel out and dig yourself a little hole but see i haven't had a number two but if i did i wouldn't take the shovel i'd rather dig with my hands because i couldn't cope with the embarrassment of getting the shovel in front of everyone and then wandering off and knowing fully well that they know it's the um it's the african equivalent of, of taking a newspaper out of the office for 20 minutes isn't it everyone knows where you're going I wouldn't. Time in you as well, won't they? <laughs> exactly. Oh, Vincent was gone for 20 minutes there. <laughs> the push was on. <laughs> so I, and I think everyone else, chooses to use the uh, actual toilets, because we do stop at actual toilets. Now, they're worth a bit of an explanation in themselves. They vary from the European proper everyday average toilet, or American standard average toilet, lovely, um, with toilet paper, to... Yesterday, which is the worst I've seen. Did you see those ones? I actually didn't see those oh, ones yesterday. Mate, it was unbelievable. It's a hole in the ground. It, it was a hole in the ground, uh, which is already bad enough because you've got to manoeuvre yourself accordingly uh, and grip onto things. Some people miss. I'm not even going to go into that. So there's a hole in the ground. No toilet paper, so bring your own. No soap, bring your own. Um, actually, nothing apart from a hole in the ground. And, and also, one hinge on the door... So you had to try and crank it round, and it was rubbed the floor the whole way, which made it sound like a giant fart. So when closing the door, everyone said, "Ah, oh, but I haven't even done anything! <laughs> it was uh, quite an event. Yeah. Well, thankfully, I didn't have to use that yesterday. I suppose it'd be more an event if you were in a bit of trouble. I think speed is of the essence with any toilet manoeuvres. When I'm in the comfort of my own home, I like to meditate, think about life, maybe make a few decisions on where life's going. I think I... I originally planned this trip on the toilet. Um, <laughs> but now, I, there's just no time to think. Get in, get out, get back to the truck, use as many baby wet ones and hand sanitizer bottles as you can. Get on with your life. Let's move away from uh, toilet habits for a minute. We've seen some stunning stuff. Some of the vistas are just breathtaking, particularly when the sun's setting over an African sky and there's kids playing in villages on their beaten up bicycles smiling and waving and just so happy to see us some of my best times have just been those sort of evening drives through tobacco plantations looking at people getting on with their lives and uh, the bustling villages of which i spoke what, what about you what's uh, what floats your boat yeah i think we were driving the other night and the mountains to our left and the sun was setting the road was winding through the mountains we were sticking our head out passing row after row of houses little mud huts it was pretty special, I have to say. Because the top comes off, it's a convertible truck, you see. Uh, we can stick our entire bodies out and wave at the locals. It is utterly magical, times like that, when you're just waving at people and they're so happy to see you. We haven't yet done an exchange. I was in Fiji once and I managed to swap three cigarettes for three oranges whilst doing an overtaking manoeuvre. I've got to top that, so... Well, the other day in Dar uh, where were we? Dar es Salaam, we're at the way station. Oh, yeah, a way station, which is where the truck gets weighed. Another way of the government making money. Uh, and they're all completely corrupt. One day we weighed one and a half tonnes less than the day before. And you have to pay per tonne, you see. So, yeah, we're at a way station. So we're at a way station and the car behind us decided he wanted two bottles of water. But it was just as the traffic started moving off. So this poor guy <laughs> handed the two bottles of water in the window. And then the traffic moved off. So he takes into a sprint. And he's absolutely flat out running beside the car right and the oh the guy's like organizing his change trying to find him money <laughs> the guy's organizing his change and your man is running and running because i mean he can't be done out of his two bottles of water that could be his day's wages yeah, exactly. and uh, he's kind of hanging on to the side of the door of the car <laughs> the open window 
and uh, the feet are the feet are going too fast and then next thing your man throws the change out and uh, he catches the change and kind of falls to the ground and lies on his back for a while yeah. <laughs> if you've ever been to any non-westernized countries you're probably familiar with the concept of being on a bus and the bus stops and it's mobbed by people trying to sell you everything from samosas to drinks even things to kill the time yesterday i saw a guy sa- selling um the board game was monopoly and scrabble <laughs> on the side of the road and what i like about him it was like plus 30 degrees centigrade and he'd made made a bit of an effort full suit and tie <laughs> suit and tie selling monopoly on the streets of uh, i think it was Dar es salaam as well well when you get off the truck and the, the what i like is their persistence and you know they don't really take no for an answer no. and i got off was it yesterday or the day before there was a small kid there he had seven mangoes on a little tray balanced on his head he was a good pusher. I saw him. He was offering mangoes left, right and centre. How'd you get on? So he offered me a mango. I said, no, I don't really like mangoes. Buy three. And I said, well, I mean, I don't want one. I definitely don't want three. OK, my friend, you buy seven. Buy seven. <laughs> buy seven mangoes. So, you know, they, they really are in for the hard sell, aren't they? Hard sell. I like his thinking. Maybe you don't like them. But by the seventh, maybe you'll like them. <laughs> <laughs>